This video was brought to you by Marcus Beal, Elbil Mac, Abadur Planner, Stoltenberg, Camp Power, and Beal Componente. Yo, what's up? Today I'm going to introduce a new test, and I will do this with Fiat 600e. This is based on Stellantis platform. It's a 54 kilowatt hour battery, 156 horsepower motor. It's quite efficient, and uh, the whole purpose of this test is to see if the drivetrain, cooling, battery, anything will overheat or, well, I don't know, go too slow, cold gate, whatever. And I have some tricks up my sleeve to try to trigger overheating. Many cars, they, they have some, I would say, design flaws. We're going to try to explore them and see if we can make this car actually break or not. Well-designed cars, if I apply my whatever tricks, right, without even trying to ruin the car, whatever, I'm just driving it more like normal, then well-designed car like Tesla would not have any problems, or maybe Audi, BMW, but then some cars will actually start charging a little slower or maybe even have power limits. And some of them, I don't even try to make it happen. It just happens by itself, <laughs> yeah. So it's gonna be a little bit different than 1000 km challenge, but there I might try to adjust things to tweak it so we get the best time. This time we're not trying to go for a time attack. So I will you know, just take it easy in that regard, but I will try to stress the car. So I will drive hard and I will actually avoid the Swedish route because we have to pass through the city. This time we're gonna just drive north on the motorway constantly and see if we can stress the battery as much as possible. And usually it's the battery that we tend to see uh, while well, going slower eventually. But okay, I charge the car to 100%. I even consider starting at uh, 10% and then we start the test by uh, charging the battery, but I find that maybe not too realistic, but at least in the sense that, okay, we are doing a test now. It's somewhat synthetic, but um, there's still some realism around it. So we start actually with 28 degrees Celsius in the battery. That is good. We want to try to stress it and see if we make it rapid gate or not. And then what else? 100% battery. Yeah. Uh, now we don't care about time. So let's do the, all the final pre preparation and then off we go. Well, we're off. I reset the trip meter. I still want to track, keep track of how many kilometers we drive and also to find out at what, at how many kilometers we rapid gate or if we have any problems. But one thing I want to do is that I want to floor it because flooring it usually means maximum power output which usually means uh, applying uh, or adding more heat to the car or to the system uh, battery whatever so uh, many people they might want to use all the power for some reason right it's not, it's not like i'm gonna drive yo-yo but when i have the chance to floor it to accelerate or something we should of course use it uh, this car doesn't have that much power in a way but anything that introduces heat is always welcome in this test without of course going too crazy about it uh, first problem already occurred after just five minutes of driving hey is that the train we are we are racing the train <laughs> okay um i can't use cruise control this happened already during the Alvdal trip but i thought it was just a hiccup i didn't bother filming it but then it happened again now so like what the heck man so i tried to activate cruise control assistance uh, cruise control no uh, driver assist okay activation not possible uh, huh? what what due to uh, conditions not no, wait why huh i don't get this man i could use limiter but that's kind of silly uh, okay i tried to clean the windscreen i tried to defog it doesn't seem to help so i will stop uh, at the next uh, exit and then maybe just restart the car and see if that helps then Okay, slight detour, uh, also slight pause in the stress test, but okay, whatever. Uh, bar, okay, I had to, yeah, okay, it's off now. Okay, it's off, all right. And then just try to fire it up. Okay, let's go, see if that helps. Okay, as usual, I just floor it. Oh, maximum power, oh yeah. Okay, and then we try to activate the cruise control. Huh? Not what? Still not possible. What? Fix it again, Tony. Okay, we had Circle K. I own the doll. So maybe the car didn't like the bugs in the radar. I, I don't know, but I mean, there's not a, a massive amount of radar. It's not a big fat bug that hit it or anything. But 
Okay, I'll do whatever I can, but it was weird because this this thing here also appeared in the Aludal trip and then suddenly it worked fine again. Oh shit, I have a lot of bugs here, but that shouldn't matter. Okay, let's try it. We try whatever we can now to make this shit work again. I don't feel like using manual driving for the next five, six hours. Uh, it is still kaput. What, what are we supposed to do now, huh? We have a kaput press car. Uh, okay, there is one way I can do this. I can go to the limiter where, uh, and then I set the limiter like this-ish. Okay. okay. Uh, but if I floor it, then it doesn't work, so... Oh, man. Okay, we're now at the Nebenes Supercharger. I didn't need to charge here, but you know, last time when it bugged, uh, it was right before Elevator Supercharger, and then after the supercharging session, then it magically worked again, and then I never had, never had any problems ever since then. So maybe that's the trick here. I've been using the car uh, not only on that trick, trip, but also did the range test and no problem. So I don't know, we are charging now, so maybe, maybe it's just uh, we need to turn it. Well, even switching it on and off didn't work. Cleaning radar didn't work, but let's see. We're taking uh, 27 kilowatts at 92%. So uh, uh, I'm not sure what else I'm supposed to do. Just to sing the rain dance, walk around the car three times and then restart it and then it should work, right? So we can also see here, we're taking 25 kilowatt. Yeah, this is a better route planner with the OBD dongle connected. But I think this should be good enough. We can uh, disconnect and then see if it works. Uh, okay, still not working. I'll try everything now, you see. Uh, activation not possible. What? Huh? what? Car is kaput. Shit. Oh yes, it works now. I had to use excessive amount of uh, windscreen uh, wiper, washer fluid. Uh, and I tried also the defog. I'm not sure if that was a problem, but it's weird because I did clean the windscreen before I left home. So maybe it was a big fat bug that uh, blocked something, but the car should have told me, oh, uh, there is not enough vision trying to clean the windscreen or, oh, the radar is blocked, you know. No, it didn't tell me nothing. I had to find out myself that you have to wipe like a mofo. So now you know. Wow, look at that. That is a nice sunset at Minnesota. It's almost midnight now. Okay, we've been driving for a while now. We're down to 34%. And you see that um, uh, consumption is 234 watt hour per kilometer. This is similar to a 1000 kilometer uh, challenge consumption anyway. And then uh, I use a better route planner right now to figure out where I'm gonna go. Well, I'm gonna stop at uh, Uno X because they still have dirt cheap electricity. One nook per kilowatt hour. So Uno X is, oh, sorry. Uh, but the route planner is doing a pretty good job for me because it will find out when, I mean, how many percent I will arrive with. So I have navigated, well, okay, sorry, I can't see too much there right now, but whatever. Uh, I bet the route planner is doing a lot of brain work for me. What I want to point out here is that the battery temperature has gone up to 33 degrees Celsius. Hmm, interesting. This car has no preheating before fast charging, but that is probably not needed. I still don't know if it has any heat scavenging or not, but okay. Let's see if we go hot there. We have to go deep, because usually when we go deep, we introduce more heat, but especially below 10%. We just turn around at the Strandlicha, heading north again towards Kotterud. And now we have 34 degrees Celsius in the battery. Oh yeah, now we're cooking. We are now at Hama, almost at the fast charger. We draw a little bit back and forth. We are down to 4%. And at 5%, it stopped displaying remaining range. It went from something like 10 kilometers till just dash, dash, dash. So it's acting like a Korean car or Chinese car. Hmm. Okay, well, uh, maybe I should bring EcoFlow on this test <laughs> in case I run out of juice. But okay, according to a better road planner, we are just. Oh, what the heck? It's a bit too bright there. But we are just uh, five kilometers away, so this should be fine. Ah, we have turtle mode. It was like a loud dong and then a big ass turtle while well, tortoise came. And now we're turtle mode. Let me see how slow is the car. Oh! Oh, it's sluggish. Okay, 2%. Uh, okay, pull out now, pull out now. Okay, exit is right here. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. It started fogging a bit. Oh, yeah, we are now charging at 500 kilometers per hour. <laughs> okay, so one of the things I will do is to start the engine. Or, okay, whatever. Uh, okay, and the screen gets extremely bright here in the Stellantis cars. But, okay, so now I will run HVAC. This will... Oh, stop bugging me about uh, 
turtle mode now that we are charging on a freaking high power charger. But <laughs> okay, yeah, we already at four percent. You say we're taking oh 100 kilowatt. Oh yeah, but the battery is hot and it should be even hotter. This is exactly what we're trying to stress. But yeah, so I'm saying that uh, when AC is running, the AC here for cabin uh, might steal the AC that will be used for cooling the battery. So okay, we'll see then. We'll wait a little bit now. Oh, I didn't pay attention. It throttled already. I think we can see it afterwards somewhere. Um, but normally we're supposed to get over 100 kilowatt until 21%. Uh, I can ask maybe in the live stream. They, dudes, do you guys see when did we throttle? I can see it afterwards maybe, but um, yeah, okay. So this is already going slower. It seems like maybe the, the rapid gate point is at around 39, 40 degrees Celsius. So, okay. Trottle at 60, okay, they say trottle at 16%. Uh oh, that's not good. That's 5% earlier than, uh, than yeah, ideal. So, all right. Seems like already at the first charging session now, we already um, stressed the battery <laughs> enough. And it was like a uh, stress testing, high speed test at 110 zone, yeah. I can show you guys Kotterud. It's just uh, a gas station. Well, actually, my, no, my bad. It's not even a gas station. It is just charging and wash. <laughs> That's the future. Yeah. So we have Swanemarke Bil. It's like um, a very uh, sustainable car wash from Uno X. Uh, they reuse some of the water or some shit like that. But the price here is still one nook per kilowatt hour. Okay, it's kind of hard to show, show you guys the, the price column there, but you can kind of see it there. Yeah, it has something to do with Tour, Tour de France. So, <laughs> of course, I'm going to milk it. Yeah. Plenty of hyperchargers available, no problem. Okay, I can hear that the cooling is running. So now I'm gonna purposely try to mess up for the car, if that affects it or not. So let's stop the car. Yeah, now we can hear the cooling. We are at 45% and 44 degrees Celsius. Now I'm gonna try something. If I start the car, will that uh, stop the compressor temporarily? Nope, that is good. That is good. <laughs> BYD, if you do this, you stop the compressor. And also, in, previously, in the, in the other, older version of MED cars, it will also stop the compressor here. It works at it, as it should. The compressor keeps cooling down the battery, regardless of what you're doing. But 45 degrees Celsius now. Ooh. Oh, look at this. If you go out of the navigation thing here, and you definitely click on this car. And yeah, I have Citroën EC4 because um, uh, Fiat 600e is not uh, implemented yet here, but this is close enough anyway. It has the same battery. And if you go click on live data now, you will see the charging curve. Oh, this is nice. There, look at this. Okay, so we started with uh, 100 is kilowatt, but then for not too long. Well, uh, this is time, not the charge, but see, and then now we're at 80 something kilowatt. Hmm. Okay, and you can also look at the data here. Yeah, 84 kilowatt. But we're supposed to get the speed until 58%. Hmm. I think I need to stay until maybe 60% then. Wait, I realized something. 62% here is 61 here. So the, the, it, it means that the throttle points were probably spot on like before. Yeah, I was looking at this screen, 61 and then it's 63 here. Okay, okay, wow, it means that we are trying to stress the battery, but it can actually maintain proper speed. It was just maybe at the beginning, it trot a little bit earlier, but uh, barely noticeable. All right, we charged to 66% uh, on the screen. So uh, I've written down all the numbers. It took 24 minutes. So yeah, now the battery is somewhat hot, but we're gonna record and see what happens now in the following uh, drive. So I will avoid Hammer because the taxation there is higher. So we'll probably just head south now. And then try to get back here again. Yeah, uh, right, right now we don't care too much about uh, where we drive and so on. Yeah, and another thing about this test is that I, I'm allowed to drive back and forth. Yeah, we don't have to go like typical uh, like that. But let me check something else here. Yeah, another thing I'm gonna check it. At 46 degrees Celsius, let me put the car in sport mode there. Do I have power limit? Oh, there seems to be slight power limit here. 
or I'm not sure. No, 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 no. I have full power. Yeah, I, I check now. Okay, I check on this play. I actually have full power at 46 degrees Celsius. No power gate there. <laughs> and why do you even test this? Well, because some other cars, they will actually have power limit there. Okay, now let me check if cruise control is working. Nope, still kaput. Oh, shit. What the heck, man? Do I need to take the car through a car wash? Okay, I'm just gonna use a uh, limiter and then, uh, yeah. We are getting close to minutes soon and we have driven only around 20-ish minutes after we fast charge and the battery is down to 35 degrees Celsius again. So, yeah, uh, that was the temperature at the last session before we started roughly. So, I think we don't have to go back to Kotoro. I don't want to end up over there. So, the test is almost done now. I can just drive back towards uh, yes home you know cleavage and then try one more session before i go home so let me see yeah 45 percent now and consumption is 236 nice and uh, efficient car man yeah but it is 15 degrees celsius at night so that helps of course we are now charging at the garden one supercharger i use a v4 stall this time i will not fire up the h-mark well i have to do this anyway but I'll stop H work. Wait, I can't see. Shit. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, off there. So we started with similar uh, as last time, a little bit higher state of charge, but similar temperature. And I will see when we now charge with H work off if that will be better for cooling or not. I don't think so. Okay, we are pretty much done with the charging test. The battery temperature seems to be more or less the same as the previous run. Actually, a little bit higher. I'm not sure why. Uh, do we have heat scavenging? So when we fire up the heater, it would then help cool down the battery by putting some of the heat in the cabin. Hmm, that is a possibility. I don't know how the Celantis platform works. Maybe you guys can tell me. Can it, for example, scavenge heat from the battery to heat up the cabin? Can it scavenge heat from the motor to heat up the battery or the cabin? I don't know, can it take the cabin heat and heat up the battery? Can it take, uh, uh, well, there are many, many modes. Tesla has pretty much all of them that make sense. Like, okay, it does make sense to take the cabin heat to heat up the motor, for example, right? <laughs> well, okay, uh, maybe I charge a little bit more and then we uh, disconnect or we could just disconnect now also. We are back home and the car is actually off. And uh, let me see, wait, can we get any info here? Um, it says, I'm not sure if we have a connection. No, I think we don't have any connection, yeah. But um, you can hear that there's something going on here. I'm not sure if this is compressor based or just only fans, but if it's only fan, that is good enough. Yeah, there's su sufficient cooling going on, but well, that's good. Want to explore every aspect with uh, with battery uh, care. If I fire up the car now, you see that the battery has cooled down to 34 degrees Celsius, but this is similar to what we experienced before when we were driving. And it's been roughly the same time. Yeah, just washing the car rather than hammering on the motorway. So, yeah, okay. I think we're done with the test. Oh man, <sighs> freaking allergies, but okay. I need to do a shout out again because I live stream. So, uh, Turbion Anderson tipped five euros. Thanks for all fun. Yeah, thank you very much. And then Julian tipped 15 euros, uh, revealing some money stress. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay. That's, we, we found out something there. We found out that this Stellantis car or would apply to other Stellantis cars also. Uh, I'm not sure what it, uh, what happens with the previous generation, but at least the latest generation Stellantis does not uh, bend to any stress. We try to stress it. It performed really well. No rapid gain, or maybe slight, but just tiny little bit, but uh, you're not really affected by it. Cools down the battery quite fast. Uh, I try to use the car's heater, no problem, you know. No compromise, really, really good. Uh, it sounds a bit boring maybe, but eventually I'm gonna test, for example, BYD. I'm gonna test some of the Stellant uh, some of the MEB cars and maybe some other cars. And then suddenly you guys are gonna see some uh, problems. Uh, yeah, more uh, battery overheating, some power limitation right after charging and stuff like that. Well, actually, when I was speaking of that, 
I remember when I tested the van from Celantis, 75 kilowatt hour. I remember that one did have power problems, uh, power output uh, limitation right after fast charge. I think that also applied to the Toyota Pro Ace, which is also based on Celantis platform. But at least this one doesn't do any thing of that so that's good yes uh no spreadsheet whatever this time we'll see if i want to put a uh, thing in spreadsheet but probably not for now so let me know uh, what you guys think about this test was it useful was it useless or you know was it just me in a desperate attempt to make more content but no i actually thought this would be a useful test it's just that you don't see the value of it yet so you should at least try a couple of more cars before we either give up this test or keep doing more okay anyway i think that's gonna be it for now i hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later